Hello everybody, this is Frank, and I'm glad to be back with you. Uh, this is our first, I guess you can call it a good day talk. It's, uh, <laughs> it's mid-afternoon, it's not morning, and it's not evening, but uh, I am here at the uh, one of my favorite places. It's uh, Minnewaska State Park here in New York, and I'm, I'm looking over the, actually sitting on the cliffs here, uh, just spending time thinking, praying, uh, and uh, looking for a nice place to talk to you, all of you who have been uh, patiently waiting for me to come back online to uh, do some uh, talks and getting back into God's Word. I want to thank you for your patience and for your, uh, your prayers and your, your blessings, really, uh, through this time. Uh, there's been a, a lot of changes in my life. Uh, as you know, the last four years has been uh, pretty dramatic and uh, and it continues to uh, move forward. I'll move forward in a very positive way. I'm doing very well. And uh, my, uh, my new wife, Vivian, is uh, very blessed. Uh, we both are. And um, doing very well. And I just want to thank you all for your prayers and for your help uh, during this time. And your patience, really. Um, as I look to um, move back into a rhythm of uh, going online and speaking with all of you. Uh, this is a beautiful spot. Well, what a place to actually begin our talks again and let me let me see if I can show you some of the views that I that I see here and I want to show you some gorgeous views on the cliffs here I mean not not to get too close to the edge but uh, just sitting on the cliffs here it is absolutely gorgeous and this is in the Hudson Valley in uh, New York State uh, a gorgeous a gorgeous place to live I'm very thankful and uh, uh, talking about places to live uh, my life has uh, as I had mentioned has changed a lot and uh, I just want to kind of maybe get, get you up to date on the latest and what's been happening um, I had uh, as you know I had gotten married back in March March 10th and uh, we had finished up in our discussion in the scriptures in Acts chapter 21 when the Apostle Paul was going to Jerusalem and uh, so that's where we kind of ended that he made it to Jerusalem and we uh, finalized a I think it's verse 25 in chapter 21 where Paul was about to um, speak in Jerusalem that's where we stopped and since then uh, I've, I've pretty much gone silent on our good morning talks and to try to think, just trying to think of all the things that have taken place since that moment, um, it has been good things, but it's been big changes. It's been a, a readjusting uh, in my life. And what I decided to do, as I had mentioned earlier, that the, the life that I had before, my first life with my wife Diana and my children, uh, was a blessing. It was wonderful, and then we had um, that tragic event uh, where she had passed away um, so quickly. She is now with the Lord, and I am very, I am very happy for her. I am very happy that she is free from the pain that she felt um, in her body and um, emotionally. And so I thank God. I, I have a great peace in where she is, and uh, the Lord has since allowed me to move forward. And um, some might think in a very quick way, uh, but I just continue to follow the steps of the leading of the Lord in my life as I look for direction and guidance. Um, and uh, so I now have uh, Vivian as my wife uh, here. And with that, I made the decision to move out of my home uh, that I r raised my children with and give the house and the property property to them to begin to, to manage. And... They are doing a great job. Uh, they're painting. They're they're doing uh, different work on the inside, and I'm very proud of them. Um, I've uh, decided to pretty much give everything that I've had in that first stage of life that um, that I had to them. Even my cars, everything, everything has been uh, given to them, and I'm very thankful. I'm going to start anew. I'm starting everything new, and so I'm no longer at the property uh, where I had my ducks and chickens and and we uh, looked at the, the fish and all of the, the, the koi and, and all of that. I'm no longer there. 
and I'm in a new location. I'm in the same uh, area. I'm, I'm only 15 minutes away now from uh, my children, uh, so I'm able to participate and help them uh, in, their, in their new lives themselves. It gives them a great incentive uh, now that they have something to, to work with and work uh, towards uh, in their own uh, lives. And, um, and so I'm about 15 minutes away. So I am looking for different ways of um, communicating with you uh, where it's, uh, I can still be outside. And so today um, was the first day that I had uh, planned on uh, recording and, and trying to get back online, getting back into that routine. And uh, today was just en ended up being a, just a gorgeous day. Beautiful day, it's about 72 degrees here. A little breeze here, I'm up, we're up on a mountaintop, so there's gonna be some wind. Um, so I apologize if the, you can hear it on the camera. But um, I'm as high as uh, some of the hawks. So we had a few hawks fly by. Uh, where, where we, when we used to sit in our yard, the um, the hawks would be way up ahead above uh, our chickens. But now, um, as I look off off these cliffs, the the hawks are right here, right in front of me, and it's and it's absolutely beautiful. So, it's I have to admit it's been kind of hard to get back into um, a rhythm. Uh, so much has changed. I'm living in a, a new place now with my wife, uh, an apartment, and we're going to start uh, anew. And um, it's been very, very good. Um, it's, it's been overwhelmingly good. Uh, it's, I don't know how to express it. I almost even pray to God and I say, Lord, you know, it's, it's one thing to have a life, um, a, one life that's good. But you have been, you've been here now to bless me with the ability to have now a second life even uh, with, uh, with a future that looks very bright. And so I'm very thankful for that. And uh, I just wanted to share that with all of you so that I know a lot of you were concerned about um, me being away, especially in April when we had the eclipse and when we had those uh, major conjunctions uh, with Saturn and Mars and in our discussions of the celestial. Um, and then the biblical texts also going through Acts. We're going to be starting that up again. We're going to get right back into Acts 21. But today, this week actually is... is going to be a discussion on uh, Pentecost because this Sunday is the May 19th is the traditional um, day that we celebrate Pentecost okay the Feast of Weeks and and so I want to read from that passage with you just spend a few moments today getting back online uh, and to read the passage where the Holy Spirit was sent down by God to to the believers so that the the beginnings of the early church would would move forward with power and authority and so i want to read that passage to you today so you're gonna you're gonna see it actually i'll tell you where it is if you want to mark it down or look in your bible it's actually acts chapter two very simple right back at the beginning and um and yes and again thank you so much um you don't know how hard it's been uh, to know when it, when was the right time to get back online. And even today, um, setting up the camera and doing a video instead of a live stream, um, I guess because of where I am, I wasn't able to be able to pick up the, uh, the connections needed for a live stream, but how difficult it's been to seek the Lord's will and, and ask him is, do you want me to continue? Is this something that you want me to do? Do I, Father in heaven, do you, is it your will um, that I continue in, the, in these discussions? And, um, and so I'm going to uh, move forward. I'm going to take the opportunity that I have today to get back online. And I would love to hear your thoughts, uh, your opinions. I appreciated all your prayers um, uh, during this whole period of time. And... Uh, I'm, a, I'm even kind of a loss for words. Um, I, it's like I, it's been almost, a, it's been, it's been a while since I've done a, a video that goes back in, back in March that we did videos. And I guess I just needed a, t a break, a, a time to spend with my, with Vivian, my new wife, and, um, and get myself resettled. 
um, being in a new location, getting the internet set up also in this new location. And so I'm gonna be looking for different spots besides the chapel. Now, some of you might say, you know, Frank, you have the chapel. Why don't you just do the live streams down at the chapel? You know, I do, uh, I do have that. I, I do realize that. Um, and I will be doing our Thursday talks from the chapel. But on Tuesdays when we get together, uh, it's been so nice to be outside it's, um, and to be around nature. And I didn't uh, have a location now where I am. I, I'm looking for various points where I can sit down and, and have an, uh, either an internet connection or, um, or you know, just, just the availability to uh, do live streams. So we're going to see what happens. Maybe I'll be doing a, a regular, just a, a recording video on Tuesdays or not. Finding places like this that I can take you to and show show you um, and and then just spend time on God's Word for a short amount of time like today is going to just be a short video just a short getting back into the the rhythm of uh, doing videos again and um, and coming out of that uh, a place of peace and rest uh, that I've been uh, that I have been in um, and uh, just spending time with all of you it's, it, it is a blessing to spend time with all of you but um, but it's been a, a, a a good time to just stop and and reset things and get things in order uh, before I come and start doing this on a regular basis. So, I think today might be the day. I mean, this might be the, the video that uh, that gets us back into that routine. And uh, again, thank you so much for all of you for for your prayers. It's funny, it's amazing. Even up here in the mountains, you got the little gnats that are that are here flying around. All right, so let's get into let's get into the book of Acts chapter two. I'm going to be reading here um, all the way to verse thirteen in Acts two. And if you would just read along with me, if you have your Bibles with you, it says, "When the day of Pentecost arrived, okay, the the disciples were in Jerusalem. They've been waiting. Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem. This is after he ascended into heaven." And it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all gathered in one place, the disciples, those that were followers of Christ. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Okay. You know, it's funny, I'm sitting on top of this mountain, and, I'm, and I was concerned about the camera because I had to find a spot where I'm like, next to a rock hidden you can see that there's a rock right next to me and uh, because the wind is blowing and it affects the camera and, and the sound i can't imagine being there in jerusalem in a in this room and the entire house gets filled with this this mighty rushing wind verse 3 says and the wind it divided into tongues as a fire and appeared to them and rested on each one of them. So each one of the disciples that were there, this mighty rushing wind came into this room um, as they were in Jerusalem. And the entire house where they were sitting, it, these, this wind, um, it, it divided, it, it became like fire that divided into like tongues, little tongues of fire, and rested upon each one of them. And... It says in verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So now they are being given this gift to be able to speak in other languages in Jerusalem uh, for the very sake to proclaim the Word of God to, to those that are there that speak all these different languages. And, you know, it's interesting. This is the beginning of the early church. The, the God is sending the, his power, his mighty power, uh, by the Holy Spirit to indwell the believers, giving them gifts to do these incredible things. And that's the beginning. That was the beginning 2,000 years ago. You know, and, and to think that God used, did it the way he did it, a mighty rushing wind, a powerful force of nature. He used nature. And then the fire. You think about the fire used, breaking up into the room and resting on each one of them like flames of fire. This is not a fictional story. This truly happened. And God literally used nature in, in respect to bring these gifts to each one of them as they would begin then 
to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to then speak in other languages. I think about that with the early church. And I look at ourselves today as we see the signs around us to know that that, er, that church age is coming to a close. We are, we are moving quickly into a time as we see the signs in the heavens, we see the things happening on earth, happening in a way where it's interesting as this period of time closes as we enter into, I believe, a possibly the tribulation period. We being at that foothills of that tribulation period. You can see that God is using nature again to bring those signs. I mean, just this past week, we had one of the biggest solar storms we've had in over 20 years um, that lasted about four days. And even today, uh, I can feel the... Uh, we had another uh, CME coming from the sun. And just think about the sun, right? That ball of fire in the sky that God created to keep us warm. That solar flares that have been uh, been sending and coming to the earth and affecting the earth. I can You can feel it if you're sensitive to it. All these signs are being presented here at the end of the church age. It's just very interesting how God, again, is going to use nature to do his will whatever that is, and as he has gifted men to accomplish the task of getting the gospel shared all over the world, we, we find ourselves in that time, in that period, and, and the Bible is very clear in telling us when that happens, then the end will come. So it's just interesting, as, as the fire and wind was used in the beginning of the church age, we're going to see similar things, I believe, take place globally because the gospel began from that room in Jerusalem and then was sent out to the whole world and now globally the name of Christ is proclaimed as the one who brings salvation so where the wind and the fire might have started in that one room I believe that we're going to see some very extraordinary events take place globally now that that word has been proclaimed globally. And uh, as we had that uh, solar storms coming, I mean, all over the world, there were pictures coming in of these um, the auroras in fire red uh, that were reaching the um, reaching places that it shouldn't. And the fact that it was red being so strong, usually they're green uh, when they come in in, in the northern uh, places, uh, but they're where they're sh being shown uh, in the south, and um, which being shown in in red, which is which means that it's very extreme, and it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of this phase that may last two years. We don't know what God is going to do within that the next two year period while our sun is in solar maximum, but we can see in His Word that we're going to run parallel to the things that are happening globally, geopolitically, but especially with Israel, especially with Jerusalem. And you can see what's happening there. Uh, what is coming? What is coming this year? We don't know. Uh, just like uh, Jesus told his disciples to wait into Jer to Jerusalem, wait. All right. And they didn't know exactly what was going to take place. The, God was going to move in a mighty way where he would send his Holy Spirit. What is going to happen for us here today? As we wait, patiently, being ready, watching, what is going to happen in our time? Um, I can take it to many scriptures that, that Jesus tells us to be ready. Be ready for it. And I believe that that's really the most important message that I, that I can share with all of you moving forward as we look into the scriptures that, as, uh, with things that have happened in the past. Um, learning from those things in the past so that we can then look and be ready for the things that are coming in the future. Readying ourselves with our Lord and being in, in step with his Holy Spirit, reading his word, uh, and doing the things that he would want us to do during this time period. He told his disciples uh, in that room to wait until the Holy Spirit came. Now he tells us to be ready and watchful once we start seeing the signs. And we are seeing them. So let's, let's, well, let's continue to read and see the rest of this um, it says, um, verse 5, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. 
And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in their own language. So you can see that the Jews in Jerusalem, um, they heard the sound. They heard the sound of the wind. And then they had the people, the disciples that were in this room, they came out and they started speaking in all these different languages. And they're saying, hold it, they're speaking in our own native language. Verse 7 says, And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Ju uh, Judah and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all these, this is verse 12, and all these were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. <laughs> okay. What's interesting, I remember the last time we spoke on this, which is two years ago, there was always going to be mockers. As God does this mighty work, and now the people start questioning, what's going on? They're seeing these signs. They're hearing things that they've never heard before. Galileans who were not versed in a native language from a place that's far away, now speaking fluently in that language. They're questioning. And... The mocker is not even really looking into the complexity of really what's happening. They just begin to mock and they say basically that they're drunk. And well, don't we see that today? Don't we see that people that don't understand what's going on, people that are not paying attention or don't want to pay attention or may not understand that they'll just mock. They'll just mock what's happening. And um, it's, a, it's sad. It's sad. The, the scripture goes on to tell us uh, in chapter 2 uh, what Peter then begins to uh, proclaim. He gives a message of the gospel, sharing with the people there Jesus. So, you know, I think about our time, and uh, we've been commanded to trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? And to love others. Love others as you would love yourself. Love your neighbors. And do good to them. Do good to them that even persecute you. Right? All these things that were commanded for us to do. And then also to take this message of the gospel. This message, the true message of who Jesus is. Coming to this world. Obedience to the Father. Being raised up with a divine spirit. The divine spirit of God inside of him. Going to a cross. To pay a debt. A sin debt. That mankind owes. So that we can have forgiveness of sin and enter into eternal life, living with God righteously before him because of what Christ has done for us. His act in going to the cross made payment so that we can find forgiveness and that our sins were then taken away from us. Uh, we wouldn't have to pay the penalty of death, um, eternal death, because of that sin. And so I would say to you, uh, be one of those people in Jerusalem at that time that, that hear the message of this great news. And instead of um, mocking, instead of putting it aside and say, well, I, might, I don't really want to hear it, I don't have time for it, or, or I uh, just don't understand it, so I don't want to look into it. Don't be one of those people. Be one of those that, um, that are asking the questions. What is going on? These are the mighty works of God that are being proclaimed uh, in a language that I understand in a word that I understand. Um, my hope is that each person here who's listening right now would understand that we are back in a, a, a biblical, I should say we are back. I feel like I am back in front of the camera sharing with you biblical truth uh, so that people can know the true Christ. I remember when I first started doing these videos back in 2020 and I was sharing, trying to help people um, wake up to the things uh, that, that were happening around us, um, the things that were happening in our world that we didn't understand, and really trying to honestly just figure things out. 
and and um, we took uh, different paths. We looked at different celebrities, uh, things that were happening, and it's con it's still happening. The things that are are, are going on is still continuing. Uh, they're just now coming to a point where they're going to be coming to a head uh, in a way that it's going to be coming out globally in a in a very dramatic way. Um, there's a few videos that were placed out by some of the other, uh, you could call them truthers or people that are sharing information, just kind of helping people understand that this is a plan that's been placed by certain people in our world that are great influencers um, that God has allowed to be uh, in this time period um, to set up a future event, set up some things that are, are going to literally play out in our time um, that will that will affect all of us globally. And God in his timing also, knowing this, allowing this, is going to literally finish the storyline. <laughs> He's going to protect Israel. He will do that. And he will um, allow the rest of the biblical prophetic text, the future events, to play out. And um, and so the timing of this, we don't know, right? We don't know exactly how. Um, so four years ago, we started really kind of waking up to this. A lot of people uh, were looking at this uh, even, even before that, but for our... Uh, community here online it began in 2020 um, we're waiting to see we're gonna wait and see uh, how things play out I, I do feel um, that because of the signs that we're seeing and also because of the signs in the heavens that we're seeing is that we're heading to some major stuff this year we have already seen it um, we've already seen a lot of things take place but uh, we're heading into some other things I want you know I wonder it's funny because I was here earlier and I didn't put the camera on I wonder if the frequency on the camera <laughs> attracts these gnats because they weren't here until I started until I hit play uh, but if you see them flying around they're they can be a little annoying but in any case uh, <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much I'm going to close out this um this discussion with prayer and uh I just again want to thank you for being with me thank you for putting up with me and um, thank you for wanting me to uh, get back online and uh, do these videos. Uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you. I want to thank you for this uh, beautiful day that we can sit out here in the sun, the warm weather, and uh, just talk about your word and, and just look at our world and be thankful for what we have. Father, please give us a, a balanced um, outlook on what's ahead, knowing that, Father, we're going to face things. Uh, many, many of us, uh, depending on where we live, have felt the effects of the, the things that are happening, the things that are coming. Uh, we pray for those globally that have been under stresses, Father, due to some natural events being tornadoes, earthquakes, uh, volcanoes, all those things that are um, affecting people. Lord God, I just pray that you would help us all. I thank you. Uh, we thank you for helping us, protecting us, giving us peace. Uh, Lord, we are told that in this world we will have tribulation. Jesus told us this. But he also said to take heart, for he has overcome the world. So please help us, Father, to continue to walk in the power of your Holy Spirit under the authority of your Son to accomplish your will. Father, we ask for blessing. I ask for blessing in all the community, Father, that uh, that has been patiently uh, patient with me uh, in getting back into a routine. I want to thank you for the changes that were made in my life, Father. Uh, we give you praise in all events. Thank you for rescuing me, uh, Father, from myself um, and helping me, uh, Lord God, to be uh, set up in a way that I can... Uh, continue to move forward in a, in a positive way. I pray for all those around me, Father. Uh, each one, um, family members, friends, all those, Father, that have been a part of my previous life and the, the ones that are uh, the new ones I'm going to meet in my new life. Father, I just pray 
Lord God, that your blessing would be upon them all. Uh, and I thank you for the spirit of love that you have given me uh, through the, the hard stuff. And I thank you for allowing me to see that the grace that has been shown to me, I need to show to others. I am commanded to show to others. And so, Father, thank you for that. So I ask for blessing upon all that are listening right now in the, in the community. And, Father, as we move forward, I just just pray that you would give us um, good discernment as we look into the heavens, Father, and we see some some interesting, continue to see interesting conjunctions, movements of uh, the planets, and um, all of those things, Father, that you have put into place. This is not some coincidental thing. This is all done by design. And thank you for allowing us the, the ability to watch it, like watching a clock. And so, Father, I pray for all those that um, will be affected by the events on this earth. We bring them before you. We ask for your mercy. Uh, Lord, but we ask that your name is proclaimed in mighty, in mighty, uh, with mighty power and, and holiness. Uh, the world will proclaim that there is a God in Israel. And Father, as the, the evil one will try to take that place as God, Father, we wait with anticipation for the return of your Son to, to really rescue this earth from that evil one uh, coming to Jerusalem. So we pay attention, Father, of the things that are happening as it all falls in line together. And Lord God, we have our brothers and sisters in India and Pakistan that are partnering with us here, Father, on our in our community. Pray for Pastor Tariq and Ike Reggie, Lord, and Anne, we pray in Brazil. Lord, that you would please bless them, help them, keep them healthy. Uh, continue the, the different uh, projects that we're, we're working on, that they would move forward quickly to get things ready and in order for this time period coming. Uh, Father, we thank you for that. And thank you for this time again today uh, on, this, on this mountain. Uh, we thank you for all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. And, and in closing, really quick, I will say that uh, E.K. Uh, Reggie in India, um, I will be updating you uh, on probably this Thursday uh, uh, with some pictures. Uh, there, a lot has happened uh, in, in the project of building that uh, church and ministry center in India and also in Pakistan with Pastor Tariq and his team uh, with the new, um, I guess you would call them um, students or uh, people that were helping, uh, the ladies that were helping and training uh, for um, so they can l learn a vocation and, um, and uh, learn the Word of God at the same time. Uh, that ministry center is, is up and running and uh, the church is doing very well. They, they actually just finished a, and even putting in a third floor bathroom. <laughs> so some of the physical things that are being done there. Uh, but we will get you all up to date on what's happening there. And the prayers for Anne in Brazil. Um, I know I don't really talk a lot about Anne, but in the chapel on Main uh, where I'm serving, uh, she's one of our missionaries in Brazil. And um, just want to pray for her. She's uh, been battling a um, shingles, actually. She got... Um, uh, she got shingles and uh, she, she's been um, her health has been uh, a little down please uh, continue to pray for Anne if you have been and uh, that she finds healing and that she's able to accomplish the the tasks that she uh, has on her heart for the Lord in Brazil so and in any case um, thank you all for participating with me today and uh, we will see you Thursday as we uh, continue our discussion on um, Pentecost and we look at the, the story of uh, the Holy Spirit coming in power uh, in the first century. Thank you so much. God bless and have a wonderful day.